the magic six, the mandate of heaven. We are still in the process of getting set up for that, so as we switch over, I'm going to read some of your donations. Uh, before I do that, I would like to let you know that we are receiving all of your donations, even if we don't get to reading every single one of them. We appreciate every donation you send in. We have $15 from Aperture Grills. Hey, Shaddix and Dr. T-Chops. Thanks for running Shots Fired so well. It was a lot of fun to watch and participate in. We have $10 from Chocovani. Hi, guys. Congratulations for your work. We love this event. This is the third GDQ I follow with my girlfriend and the first time we donate. Keep it up. Greetings from Italy. We have $60 from Coster. Greetings from Ireland, all. So delighted to see the donations total already over the half million at this early point in the week and just had to throw another 60 in for such a good cause. Such a crazy good lineup of games this evening. Best of luck to all the runners. We have $213.21 from Undeniable. Thank you guys for all you do. I love that you guys are helping a great cause while also showcasing one of my passions, speedrunning. While I'm only one man, I hope this donation goes to show that when people come together, great things can happen. Shouts to the Stew Crew, who helped me compile this donation, and shouts to Krabs for just being adorable. Keep up the great events. I have a $25 anonymous donation. Greetings from Austria. I'm donating in memory of my grandfather, who traveled as a medical professional to some of the 69 countries served by Doctors Without Borders prior to his battle with cancer. He was also an avid hunter, so don't forget to kill those animals. And while we're on the topic of killing the animals, um, killing the animals is currently in the lead by almost $1,500 with $46,964.35, while save has $45,516.23, goodness. It is 3 a.m. in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm feeling great. Okay, we have a $25 anonymous donation. For the third time, I'm donating to GDQ on behalf of my late grandmother who helped people her entire life as a nurse. This is for the brave men and women the world over that risk their lives to do the same. This bit goes to the runner's choice. I have a $150 anonymous donation. There was no comment on the donation, but we still appreciate it. We have $50 from Fogo102. For all you beautiful people helping, thank you. Whether you are a runner, tech support, host, audience member, or donator, donator you are all amazing. Keep it up. I have another $150 anonymous donation. Greetings from Canada. We have $50 from the Game Llama. I'm donating to help a great cause and hopefully win a prize for my lovely wife, Kelly. We've never watched GDQ before, and this year, we've watched a lot together. Watching games all night with her is the high point of my day. We also both love animals, so you'd better save them. We have $150 from Dragon God 8. Been watching GDQ since the beginning, when it was just the Speed Demos Archive event held in Radix's basement. Now I feel like an old man. As always, my money goes to saving the pixels and killing the animals. We have $50 from Bobo Blio. There are two games in which you can donate a total of $50 to win the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to donate if you want to be in the running for this excellent prize. And actually, uh, before this event started, I was backstage helping some of our photographers take photos of the prizes, and we have some amazing prizes for SGDQ. So yeah, definitely get your donations in if you would like to win some of the stuff you've seen so far on the stream. We have $50 from Zeto Viker. Just getting home from a double shift today, and as promised, I'm donating more. Shouts to the volunteers and the runners donating their time, which is just as valuable, if not more, than money, if you ask me. We still appreciate your donations, Zeta Viker and everyone else. 
We have $20 from Quarry Man. Hi. Second donation of Marathon. Thought I might as well donate during one of my favorite games of all time. I've been a longtime viewer of Games Done Quick, and I hope these great events never go away. As for my donation, put it towards the Shattered Man glitch in Earthbound, because I have absolutely no idea what it is. Keep up the good work. I certainly have no idea what that is either, so let's find out together. I have $10 from Fuan. Congratulations to you all. Great event. Thanks to the French Restream. We have $5 from Tanner Lincoln. Longtime donator, first time viewer. Figured I'd help out the cause. Happy speed running. We have $50 from Nobimon. Good things happen to people who do good things. Thank you, SGDQ. And we are ready to go on Might and Magic 6, the Mandate of Heaven, so I'm going to hand it over to Captain Clever. Uh, put mine, put mine. I like bird. Excellent. Excellent. Greetings and salutations. So this is going to be uh, Might and Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven, and we have character names. I'm just going to look at them. So we have the top four. And I'm just... And salutations. Yeah, okay, okay, great. <laughs> There's going to be a cursor on that screen, so... Hold on, sorry. I have to just put this here so I can read them easily. Okay, so I see top four. We're just going to close, if you don't mind, the character names for this. So you'll see what they are, and we will do our best to mention them when we play. Ooh. And <laughs> the Della Claire gets to be Goku. There we go. I think that is right. Yeah, okay, that's top four. Can I get a pronunciation on the third name? Chevro. Chevro sounds about Chevro. right. Chevro? Looks right to me. <sighs> so that's where we should start. Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Um, so because this is such a busy run for the runner, I have a dedicated commentator. This is Pro Gaming with Ed. I'm Captain Clever, doing the run. Uh, and I guess we can just get started. So uh, I'll give a countdown in five. So five, four, three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome to Mind and Magic 6. The first thing we're going to do is use a glitch where we're going to bring a fifth party member into our party. There isn't a fifth party member, so it's going to grab an arbitrary block of code from the top of the stack. And then we're going to wipe the party and die with a party member missing. What that's going to do is it's going to turn the game blue and also reduce the hitbox of our party down to a single pixel. Then a lot of, a lot of the uh, walls and floors and ceilings have a lot of pixel gaps and stuff, so we'll be able to do a lot of broken things. We can also swap, the, do the fifth party glitch again to Good. put our druid on the end, sort of art fast. Oh, Replace his skill points with a frame counter. So that's going to be about 50 skill points, which is 20 levels How worth. Are you? Thank you. So, this game has a lot of Easter eggs because New World Computing loves Easter eggs. So, in the like multi part chain, that bank has a wall, a fly scroll in the wall, and they want you to have that so that you can get to the secret teleporter to Dragon Sand, which is one of the in game areas. I have to learn some skills here. Uh, we're going to exit the game for your sake so that the game's not blue anymore. Hopefully it's back up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Dragon Sand. This is like the in-game area. All these dragons would be completely ruining us, but because we're a single pixel, all of the projectiles are going to miss us. So we can just go in and steal their treasure, and they're yep. trapped. And as long as the trap isn't lightning, which is a one in four chance. I was getting a bad chest. We're just going to try again. We can just steal all their treasure. We need about, like... 26,000 gold, so we should be... Are you kidding? That chest was also pretty bad. Okay, yeah, let's try again. 
Of course, Marathon Walk. This is the only RNG in the entire run just at this very start. More or less, yeah. Yeah. It's a very front-loaded run. So that shrine that yeah, we went to is the Shrine of the Gods, which is shaped like the New World Computing logo. It gives it gonna double all of our stats. Also. Uh -oh. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Also, it has another secret teleporter in it that takes you to New World Computing Dungeon, which is an in-game version of their office. And that used to be in the old route where there was, you get a bunch of golden bonuses there. You got this, Captain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Dragon Sand is not being nice today. Okay. Nice. That's the first two. But we need more gold, <laughs> so I gotta go again. All right. Yeah, there's like four chests in Dragon Sand. I don't lose very much time to get the rest of them. Yeah, you're not supposed to come here from the beginning. This is, this is a very yeah. dangerous place to be right now. Oh, excellent. That's perfect. Yeah, we'll take that. All right. Next, there's a little desert oasis here where there's going to be two lovely ladies who are going to cast some spells for us. Hello. Uh, she is a Windmaster. She'll cast Fly. This is Naomi. She casts Town Portal. Town Portal will take us to any of these six towns. The plot for this game is our hometown of Sweetwater was destroyed by devils, and we need to defeat them, but we don't know how to defeat them, so we need to access the Oracle, because the Oracle knows how to defeat them, but we can't access the Oracle because of bureaucracy. So we need to appease the six lords of Inroth. Loretta Fleece here wants us to go to every stagecoach in the world and get them to raise their prices. So that's gonna take like five minutes. And this is a very open game so we can just kind of travel freely. Uh, Rupert Humphrey, who... Wilbur. Wilbur Humphrey. Great wants, names. Yeah, wants us to get that shield out of that chest. So that's that done. Do, do, do. Free of so yeah, Some more stagecoaches. Need a ride? Yeah. Hitch up the horses. yeah, we run all over the place. Um, it, where we can go with these uh, stagecoaches depends entirely on... Uh, Day of the week? Yeah, yeah. There's so a, a big in game that. schedule that we have routed around. We have basically no wasted days. N none at all at this point. Yeah. Used to, and then finally oh, yeah. figured out some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Free Chips did a run of this. It was the first run I found that actually used the fifth party member glitch. And I just, oh, me and Captain together, spent like a few fish. months just cleaning up the route, getting it to where it is now. So we've turned it. We turned in the shield. So that's one of our six council quests complete. Did some training. Getting the twelve water magic lets us become a master, which means that when we get town portal, we can use it just as good as Naomi here. And then all that was waiting because we need to burn days to refresh our spellcasters on the right because they only cast once per day because they're lazy, which is why we need to get the spells ourselves. So lazy. Like I could cast it five times in a day if I wanted to. Uh, Anthony Stone is the other one. This one is... Eric von Stromgard. Uh, it is snowing. He wants us to end winter. So that is a quest we need to do. And then Anthony Stone wants us to catch the Prince of Thieves. Yeah, this guy over here. Look at his fancy castle. He's right. so important. The harpies we passed by cursed us, so we have our stank faces. Do, do, do. So now we're going to pick up a couple of expertises. Mm -hmm. This is all just like training and stuff. Just prep to, work. Just prep work so we can cast all the broken spells. There's How a few you? broken spells in this game. Okay. Might magic has good magic. Yeah, we're not even going fast yet, frankly. This is the slow part of the run. The fast is real soon, though. Need a ride? Hitch up the horses. And finally, the last stage coast. And we can head straight back. Do, do, do. Yep. Yeah, in case you're wondering, this is a game from the Win 36 era, um, 1998. So it's got that that wonderful look of it, of that kind of 3D going on. What a what a jerk. Okay. All right. So we've gotten all the training we need to do done, and we've completed the stagecoach quest. So basically, we're free to just do whatever we want. 
now. We can dismiss our lovely ladies because we're done with them. We're going to pick. Now we need to go shopping for magic. Shopping. Pick up Greetings. a merchant and a duper, which is going to make things cost less Greetings. so we can actually afford everything. And a we whole can, lot less. Yeah, we can complete everything just with the gold that we got at the start. We need telekinesis. That's going to let us interact with objects from very far away. Saves minutes of walking. Or I guess flying, because flying is much faster than walking. The air guild here, we're going to pick up fly and jump. If the uh, guild doesn't have what we need, we can just reload. Uh, fly, obviously, is super fast. Flying is good. It's illegal to fly indoors, so we need jump so that we can continue to do broken things when we're indoors. Uh, haste is to beat the final boss. Yeah, haste, you'd think we don't use it at all until the very end, but it is super duper important. Yeah, I'm not, not spoiling what it's for, though. That's the good part. Of course not. And then we need Lloyd's Beacon and Town Portal here. here Excellent. Town Portal, you've seen, just goes to those Good six show. towns. Okay. Lloyd's Beacon is mark and recall. Yes. You set a okay. beacon somewhere, yes. and then you can recall okay. it later. Obviously, okay. saves on backtracking. Okay. So this is how telekinesis works. Yoink. I'm suddenly in that building. So Slicker Silvertongue there is representing Wilbur Humphrey. He is supposed to let, give us access to the Oracle, but he's just no sir to us. So now we need to get him removed from the council, which is like next slide quest. Doing a small sequence break, going to the Nor file here. We're going to pick up a memory crystal, which we don't know that we need yet, but the game's open. This is also going to be our first dungeon. You can see that because we're a single pixel, uh, the camera, which is centered, is halfway submerged into the ground, so it's in a no draw. So things are going to look neat. Captain can actually like look down to have the entire screen in the no draw, which is it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Don't mind all these characters. The fact that we're ants means that their projectiles yeah. have an incredibly so, unlikely chance to hit us. So casting jump here s skips basically the entire dungeon and also a puzzle that we need to get a password for. Then the last spell we need is three copies of Shrapnel, which is just for doing lots of damages. We use it to kill like four things. Oh, here we go. So Shrapnel's in those brown books. The, uh, the reason that this is so hard to get is because there's another spell, Mass Curse, which Germain, the, guild, the dark guild master, is trying to sell us. Germain. And it's gl the spell is glitched and does literally nothing. It's a good game. Okay, yes. so everybody gets these okay. spells. Yes. Boink. Yes. And here we go. Hello. So we're getting everybody up to dark magic okay. to make okay. shrap metal even more effective. Okay, now all the training's done, I promise. <sighs> Only action from here on out. <laughs> so Kriegspire is basically the, the central hub of the whole game where all the fun action comes. By the way, this game is from an old era of PC gaming where a lot of the difficulty is from just not knowing where things are, and the game just doesn't hold your hand at all for telling you where things are. So our quest to end winter, you just say, hey, go end winter, and no one knows how to end winter. And it turns out you just talk to that hermit on the mountain, and he ends winter for you. <laughs> so the quest done. Amazing. This well here gives us plus 30 levels which means that we don't need to do any training to do all of the in-game stuff. It's temporary, so we'll need to come back. We needed the Prince of Thieves earlier, so we just grab him now. Hi. Uh, the Freehaven Sewers, there are six different entrances, which are just in people's houses. Try not to think about how we're getting into the sewers from people's houses. <laughs> but this is, once again, a giant labyrinth, and it's a wild goose chase where you need to clear out like three different thieves guilds in order to find out that the guy is even here. So we have time for a donation while we're just walking through the sludge. We have $50 from Olay240. Mighty Captain Clevler and his magical run. Does that count as a pun? So glad to see Might and Magic in the GDQ. Hope to see more next time. Big thanks to all the runners and the staff for yet another amazing event. All right, so the Prince of Thieves is going to be just around the corner behind a secret door. And just hide, literally just hiding under his bed. Hey, you. you normally have to take this incredibly circumnavigous route just to figure out where he is, and it's the worst, but we can just go straight there. And see, we're continuing to use telekinesis to just save time. Ignoring doors. Yeah, so we've basically. entered winter, and quick. 
found the Prince of Thieves, so we could turn in both those quests. That's four of the seven council quests we need to do complete already. Dismiss our merchant because we're picking up a new follower, a very important follower. The best follower. Which makes the single segment route possible. Ah, the curse. Well, hopefully this will work out. I mean, the curse doesn't matter because we can just pick up. <sighs> you missed. Yeah, I, well, no, that's because of oh, the yeah, curse. Oh, yeah, you're cursed. Oh, that's, yeah. That's why. Hello. Dang. Gotta go get Healergasm. Okay. So this is Healergasm, the master healer. Oh, Baron Anthony. The curse makes your spells have a chance to fail, which is why the telekinesis failed. Yeah. All right, so next we need to go to Garrick's Forge, which is the most difficult uh, dungeon in the game for the speedrun. It's not actually that hard, but like casually, but every single floor ha is just, you know, it's very porous. <laughs> the, the floor doesn't hold up ants very well. Got that right. Okay, I'm just going to okay. change a couple of readies. Whenever I need to use jump, I always switch to the ready spell to that because mm -hmm. trying to cast that and then immediately remember to push right. my direction. So first button. sequence break, just jump down that spiral staircase. Second, skip a puzzle by just jumping over there. Yep. Just slide through this wall and then into the floor. <sighs> Video games, what, what are you going to do? I'm All right, so first secret break, come down the spiral staircase. Second secret break, skip a puzzle by jumping across here. Then right through this wall. Yeah, it didn't fall through the floor this and time. And through that locked door. Okay, okay, jump, 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 jump for my life, because there's a chance that I'll just fall through that floor with no, and no and expectations. Skipping for it. another puzzle with another jump. That one's skippable normally, but we, yeah. you know, why not? Why not? Good. Sometimes, sometimes the chocolate cleric specifically. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come on. I uh, forgot there to mention, go. from from left to right, the classes are a druid, a vanilla cleric, a chocolate cleric, and a sorcerer. Yeah. Yeah, Chevro has two jobs, one of which we basically just completed right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Swingle. Swingle's our resident jumper and flyer. Yeah. He does a lot of work. And Goku's there to cast Telekinesis. Oh, he blocked the jump. He's so skilled. Oh. All right, another staircase skipped. Jump's really good. Like, a lot of the appeal of this game casually is just that it's so broken, there's so many things to exploit. They put all these spells in the game, and I don't know if they ever expected us to actually use them. Like, just trigger the trap there just by TKing that. And that's the Hourglass of Time which Albert Newton wants and missed. We'll turn that in later. Need a ride? Hitch up the horses. Okay, we're about to set up another beacon. Make it easy to move back here. Yeah, there's a, the areas that you can't town portal to, you need to set beacons. So we tell, we tell, we tattle on Slicker Silvertongue to Wilbur Humphrey, and he gives us a cloak of Ba belonging to Silvertongue. So he's probably a traitor, but we need proof. Ba, by the way, is an evil an evil cult started by the devils. That well is trapped. The trap is that it puts us in the middle of this castle, really close to the memory crystal. So very dangerous trap. So that's the second memory crystal of four that we, you know. We Come on. The pixel shot. Ah, mm. oh, couldn't find it. There it is. Albert Newton. Uh, back over. Did you ever explain the, the pressing enter thing to reset? Oh, uh, yeah. The, this game, you can switch between real-time and turn-based mode. When you switch into turn-based mode, it just resets the cooldown on everyone's spells, so that saves time. <laughs> That's really broken, by the way. This is the only difficult combat in the run. We need to go to the Devil's Outpost and get their plans by killing the Devil of Ba. Yes. And this is why everybody needs Shred Metal. Because this can go really badly unless you do it really fast. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, got him. All right, excellent, and we're out of there. Yeah, that was fast. First try is a good try. So that's the Devil's yes. Plans, which Osric Temper wants, which okay. is every council quest completed now, okay. except for we need the evidence that Slicker Tongue is a traitor, so we're going to head over to the Temple of Ba. I think this is Superior Temple of Ba. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is Chevro's other job, opening doors. Yeah, it, every door here is trapped and you need four perceptions to open it, so we just get four perception. You can use, Lee, this place is also massive, but use Lee's Beacon to cut down a lot of running. 
It's also a couple more murders to do. That guy has a key. You need two keys to open the chest that has the evidence in it. We just passed the chest. But we need the key for it. <laughs> yeah. We need two keys. Oh, this game. I love giving, requiring two keys followed by actually doing what we need to do. Yeah. Slaughter Bart Fast puts in a lot of yeah. work. And once again, we're ants. It's, it's very hard to hit an ant. Resetting to make it slightly faster. Okay. I gotta grab the gold because I'm greedy. There is evidence that he's a traitor, so that way we can just... Oh, oh whatever. Oh. We'll fall. Oh. Uh, by the way, the, the water is really cold and it hurts you. Uh, there we go. Gotta watch this. Do not believe you've won. Soon the Iron Fist will lose its grip and I will be your king. New World Computing logo. You can be sure I won't forget you. This is some incredible acting. Give right. it up for Silver Tongue. So, we're going to turn in the last council quest, which will let us access the Oracle. And now we can just spoil the big pot twist, which is that the Oracle is a giant computer, and the memory crystals are its memory, and we need to collect the other four for it to work. This is like the second most dangerous dungeon in the entire game, but because we're ants, we can just slide through this window and fall down here. Wait, that window happens to be right above where the memory crystal is, and we can just grab it out of the air with TK and skip the entire thing. Need a ride? Hitch up the horse. Then we head over to Darkmoor to have another sweet skip. When uh, Free Chips did the run, there was a very difficult skip uh, in an awkward place where a bunch of ogres are beating on you. And I, when trying to find a safe strat for it, I think I was trying to kill the ogres, I accidentally found this. If I get it. Oh, I didn't get it. Wow. Wow, Captain. First try every time. <laughs> it's OK. It's very easy, but also very difficult. There it is. That's Suddenly, half the yeah. entire dungeon's yeah. over. It's like right through the ceiling. <laughs> The rest of Darkmoor is just a really long walk, so I'm going to explain the plot, which is that the human race is a bunch of space aliens who have gone off on expedition missions with a big global network. The Kriegans, which are the devils, which are unrelated space aliens, showed up, beat up the humans, and disconnected them from the network, bringing them back to bar barbarism, barbarism, which is you know, a society of people cutting hair. Medieval times and magic. Right, which is why we're on swords and magic and stuff, but there's all these, like, secret computers. So the oracle we're trying to access is actually just, like, uh, it's, like, a giant computer that acts as a museum and, like, tourist kiosk. <laughs> so once we turn in the memory crystals, we're going to need to get a control cube from the tomb of Varn which is a giant pyramid, which is the spaceship with which the humans arrived. This, so first, turn on the oracle. Always turn on the oracle. Bad feeling. So this section is hilariously one of the, like, the most refined and optimized parts, and it's literally just clicking on four pedestals. Like Months of innovation have cut minutes off of literally clicking on four pedestals. Yeah, you'd be between, surprised. From like the TK and the Lloyd's Beacons and like resting to refill mana and a whole, whole bunch of other strats. There's so many like just tiny little optimizations in this game. Yeah, this used to be really boring and now it's only half as boring. It's, <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, this run is, if you're confused, that's perfectly normal. This is a very, very confusing run. I mean, this is just your standard fantasy RPG where you just go around and do quests and everything works. Do you right. This is just a little bit of safety training for the marathon. Just to make sure everyone has, like, some health. Very nice. Then Very nice. dismiss the duper, pick up fun healer. Okay. So conveniently, we can just go back to Dragon Sand. Through that same. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah, conveniently, we just go back to Dragon Sand. Hey, Dragons, how's it going? And then, as soon as we render in, 
There it is. There's that gi the giant pyramid in the middle of the desert. It's the Tomb of Varn. Also, this is a wall. And now we don't care. Tomb of Varn takes like, oh god, it's like four, four and a half minutes, yeah. and it's pretty boring. Tomb of Varn is about the size of every single dungeon we've been into so far combined. That's the hardest jump in the game. Hard jump. And then we're, we're jumping along here because this wall will just like suck you up and spit you out somewhere else. Sort of Bart Fast putting in his, his really important skill of Lloyd's Beacon. Like, if we didn't have Lloyd's Beacon, this would probably take, like, seven minutes instead of four, four and a half. Yeah. It's, it's really important. So normally what... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for the genies to stop trying to hurt us. Because they're really loud. About to get some quiet time. All right. So, the Tomb of Arn is a giant space pyramid. There's a big irradiated room that you need the Legend of the Crystal Skulls to protect you from the radiation. And then you need to collect six passwords belonging to each of the crew members of the spaceship uh, that all activate a different of six different positions. The, all the passwords are the corresponding Star Trek crew member backwards, so the captain's code is Crick. And the uh, doctor, yeah, the doctor's code is Yakum. <laughs> yeah, uh, John Van Kanigan, uh the creator of Might and Magic, huge Trekkie. You see it all over the games. Uh, here. Now we just there's a there's a skip. Oddly enough, we can skip another thing by being ants. This is, this room's really dangerous. This is why we pick up two healers. Come on! Come on. All right, go with me. All right, yeah, so yeah. Goku died, but that's normal for Goku. We need to bring him right back. So we needed the other key to get the key to open this chest, and that key opens the chest that actually has the control cube. Yeah. The uh, accessing the control tube normally, you jump, fall down a giant pit, and there is no way out. So they had to put in a back door so that you could actually leave if, for some reason, you didn't have Town Portal or Void Speaking by this point. So we're just going to enter through the back door, which is, you know, two minutes of walking from here. So you could read some donations. Yeah. We have $50 from SSFXSX17. Good luck on the run, Captain Clever. Shout out to Commander Keen. We have a 500 anonymous donation. Dang. We have $50 from Benjamin Holland. Love watching this run. Great work, Captain. Shout out to Zach Z, who showed me this game. We have $10 from Eva113. I played this years ago. Result? I saved the world, but blew up the planet. On behalf of myself and my friend, who's probably traveling home from work currently. We have $75 from two Parmanians. Good luck to our favorite runner, Captain Clever. He is absolutely one of the best. So these laser sounds, those are, you know, floating drones firing lasers at us. Don't worry about it. Uh, speaking of, uh, what's the bid war for the ending looking like? Yeah, we should probably close it now. You are going to be saving the world by quite a large margin, around $800, actually. Excellent. Sounds good to me. All right, so we're finally in the control center. Uh, we're going to read this, and it's going to tell us how to use blasters. Never point a blaster at something you don't intend to vaporize. Very important. And then we're going to get ourselves a blaster right here. Like I said, this is your standard fantasy RPG. Everything's standard. So we're gonna we're gonna kidnap the prince here to save a few frames. Yep, there he is. We need to talk to him again, so we're just gonna take him with us. Okay, let me give us that. So this is like a final fetch quest at the end, which should take a while because it doesn't give you any hints. But it's literally just talk to the prince, click the well, talk to the prince, go to this door, all within inches of each other, and you get sent around the entire world trying to find this stuff. <laughs> Video games, man, they just, they don't respect your intelligence, and then you just, you break them like this, and you get back for all of those years. All right. Bam. All right. So we actually just traveled diagonally there, but if you've played the game, uh, hey, you can travel diagonally, but you didn't know that. Let's do this now. Also, 
we were in the final area of the game. The prince didn't want to come, so he went to the circus for an unrelated side quest. That's how you hold a blaster, by the way. That is how you hold a blaster. And now we're ready to go and on our way to the final dungeon, the Hive, which is the spaceship the Kriegans showed up on. Standard fantasy RPG. Pretty much. Pretty much. So the haste spell reduces your hit, hit recovery by a fixed amount. The blaster fires very quickly. It has a very low hit recovery. As it so happens... Instant transmission. The, uh, uh, the amount that haste reduces your hit recovery is more than the blaster's hit recovery, so it gets dropped to zero. So you end up firing every frame if you're hasted and using a blaster. Yeah, if you don't know what firing every frame looks like, it looks kind of like that. And yeah. like every attack is a mini nuclear explosion. It's, yeah. it's pretty, pretty good. So this game uses like Dungeons and Dragons numbers, so you roll like 2d8 plus 4 for damage and stuff. The DPS on the blaster with haste is something like... 50,000 damage per second, something ridiculous like that. This is the final boss. Oh man, good fight. All right, let's finish up. And time. Yeah, we, we finished. Uh, it happened. Oop, I can get the cursor out of the way now. Okay, so that's the Ritual of the Void, the scroll we picked up. And this is, this is my favorite part. Look at all these guys. Oh, so good. And this is my favorite, Mage Jive. He's just, he's really happy with his, his cane there. He's just having so much fun with it. This is early 3D FMV. Mm -hmm. And that, that is what all of our characters looked like, four dudes in full plate. And there's Nikolai, who is actually in the circus right now, but He's here ready to knight us anyway. <laughs> For heroism and valor in the service of the realm, I the knight. Rise, heroes. All of Enroth thanks thee. Mage Jive, Mage Jive. Mage Jive right there. There it is. Yes, I love thank Mage you, Jive. heroes. Thank you for saving my kingdom for me. This guy's the best laugh. <laughs> oh, it's such a good laugh. All right, so Slur to Bartfast, Goku, Chevro, and Swingle just saved the world in a, a mere two months and 24 days. There's actually a way to beat this game in like four or five days. Four, five days is the current record, but I have a route for four, yeah. so coming soon. It's pretty good. So um, just in conclusion, uh, thanks to uh, the original SDA segment around uh, Xiao... What was it? Chao Z Yizu? I think it was that. Sorry. It's, it's the Mind of Magic 6 run on SDA. Yes. You can find it. Um, that was the original run. Free Chips then improved it a lot. There was also Matt Pieta who helped me out when I was first looking at Free Chips run. Um, and uh, Ichim Arnold, who currently holds the record at a sub-25. Oh, what was my time, by the way? Um, but... 2750 is not that bad at all, especially given Dragon Sand there. But yeah, he's got he's got a pretty darn good run at this point. So uh, thanks to all those people, and many thanks to Ed, who has been the chief router of the game for quite some time now. Uh, he's brought it down from the free chips uh, 32, 31-ish to where it is now, almost 10 minutes less. So um, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, GDQ, and um, I'll see you around. All right, and coming up next, we actually have an interview with Fiesel and Aquas, the runner of Ghosts and Demons, which will be happening later on in the marathon. And after that